Hello, gang. Pokey Megan coming at you here with another episode of Music Chats. This will be our second episode. If you're new to this channel, welcome, first of all. We do mostly Pokemon Go videos, eventually working towards travel videos, and my third passion, music. So this section of the channel is brand new, and it's basically for me to gush about all of the music that I love. So today's episode is a super special one for me. I've been really looking forward to making this and really excited to share it with y'all. Before we get started, if you're interested in the content that I post on my channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, leave me comments, give me likes. All of that will really help this channel grow and help me to keep making these videos, which I'm having a ton of fun doing. All right, so let's get started on this super special Music Chats episode. So ordinarily this time of year, my husband Scott and I would be flying off to Iceland. Yes, Iceland, the place where literally everybody goes and where they're not shy about posting their Iceland photos on Instagram. So by now, you've either been to Iceland or you've seen plenty of Iceland content. You know, something like this. that Iceland is one of the most beautiful places on the planet, my favorite place on the planet, that's not what we're here to talk about today. I'm thinking a little more something like this. That is right gang, you guessed it, music. And for the past few years, my husband and I have been attending Iceland Airwaves. Fun fact, we met at Iceland Airwaves. But unfortunately this year's festival was postponed to 2021 due to COVID. But I seriously cannot go a year without celebrating Icelandic music. And since we can't be there this year, I'm going to put something special into a video. So you're probably wondering what the heck is Iceland Airwaves? So it's a music festival. It's held in Reykjavik, Iceland. That's the capital of Iceland. So it is a city festival. The festival has been going on for many, many years now. And its purpose is to showcase local Icelandic musicians. They also mix in a number of other Nordic and Scandinavian artists and a few small and large internationally known acts. This festival is also really cool because they've been recognized two years in a row now by Key Change, an organization that supports gender equality in music festivals. So Iceland Airwaves has had a 50-50 split of gender for their performing artists, which is awesome because anyone who attends music festivals or really even listens to music, you know that the performers are predominantly male. So Iceland Airwaves is great because it focuses on including women, LGBT, BTQ, people of color, and it's just a super inclusive festival. So anyway, myself and my husband are absolutely obsessed with this music festival. Look, we're even the faces of the 2018 After movie. So today's video will be both to celebrate and mourn Iceland Airwaves 2020. And I'm going to do that by sharing just a handful of my favorite Icelandic artists. So if you listen to music at all, you're probably familiar with people like Bjork, Sigur Rós, of Monsters and Men. There's a small handful of Icelandic musicians who are pretty well internationally known, but we are not going to talk about them. We are going to talk about the smaller Icelandic artists, the ones who honestly blow so many international acts straight out of the water, but aren't really big enough to get their music outside of Iceland, especially to markets like North America, 
So I've selected a handful of artists and believe me, this was really, really hard because there are so many artists that I am in love with. So I'm just gonna go over some of their work, talk a little bit about what they sound like and a little bit about what their live performances are like. And I really hope to inspire you to check out some of these artists and the Icelandic music scene as a whole. I really, really also encourage you to look into the Iceland Airwaves 2021 festival and consider going. If you haven't been to Iceland, if you like to travel, if you like music, I promise you will not be disappointed by this festival. And if you really want to get into it this year, they will be hosting a virtual festival called Live from Reykjavik, featuring some of the best Icelandic artists, a few of which will be on this list. If you're interested in that and have some money to spare, the link will be in the description for you to go check out and consider purchasing a ticket. And just a couple things before we start, I did create a playlist with some of these artists that I'm going to talk about, some of their YouTube videos. So if you want to really interact with this video that I'm making, go ahead and check out that playlist and listen through some of these artists after the video or even during it when I'm going through them. Okay, so with all that being said, let's start talking about some music. All right, so the first artist I'm gonna talk about is a little bit larger of an artist. I'd say they definitely have made strides into breaking into more international markets, so you may have heard of this band. That band is Book. So Book is a three-piece pop group that I am absolutely obsessed with. They played a secret show in Portland last year at the Dandy Warhol studio, and I was lucky enough to attend that, and it was absolutely gorgeous. Their most recent record, In the Dark, came out last year, and it's a flawless album from start to finish. It's full of emotional, flowy, kind of dance, poppy tracks that are super catchy and just get stuck in your head every time you listen. And one of my favorite things about this band is their drummer. So their drummer is also in another Icelandic band called Hatri, who are an absolute 180 from Vuk. They're basically an industrial techno BDSM group. So the contrast between this drummer in Vuk versus Hatri is insane. Let me give you a little preview of that. Vuk. Hattery. So this band is going to be for people who like dreamy electronic pop. So bands like Palicia, Gordy if you know Gordy, Ms. Mister if you remember them. So I definitely encourage you to check out the album In the Dark. You will absolutely fall in love. All right, next band is going to be Glara Cure. So this one is going to be much harder than our last recommendation. So if you're a fan of post-rock that kind of leans more towards metal, you'll probably really like this band. So for instrumental kind of post ambient rock bands such as this one, you're gonna find that full spectrum of sounds where they can just be super soft, cinematic, and orchestraic, and then just explode. So you're gonna get those metal vibes too, and you're gonna be headbanging. I think this band probably fits really well with the type of music that people might picture when they think of Icelandic music. You know, long hair, bearded, massively sized Vikings stomping around on icebergs and throwing their guitars into volcanoes. Yeah, that pretty much sums up Glerkjör. The good thing about them is that they are super charmingly digestible. So if you are someone who kind of stands off away from metal, you might actually like these guys anyway. They're definitely for fans of bands like Russian Circles, maybe Godspeed You. And if you kind of only delve into post-rock a little bit and you like explosions in the sky, I'd say you've got enough overlap there that it might be worth checking out. And holy cow, let me tell you, when I saw these guys at Iceland Airwaves, it was like the last day of the festival and I was running on fumes. Before their set started, I was literally sitting on the ground with my head in my lap because I was so exhausted. And as soon as they started playing, it was like back in the game. Okay, on to number three. Number three is gonna be another crazy dance pop electronic group. You'll come to find out that Iceland has a lot of really hard rock and a lot of really fun electronic pop. Something about the mountains and the volcanoes and the northern lights, it all makes sense. So FM Belfast. If you have ever been to Iceland, Iceland Airwaves, or really any type of music event in Iceland, I really hope you've seen or heard of FM Belfast. They are the absolute most insane fun live performance I have ever seen in my life. They're also the only group that made me be the person who comes from the back of the pit and physically pushes my way all the way up to the front, making everyone else who's been camping there get out of my way. I don't particularly like being that girl, but 
I really didn't have a choice. I had to be in the front. So FM Belfast is basically a group made up of all the craziest musicians that live in Iceland. They're what I would call party pop. So think like Andrew WK, except way more neon, way more confetti, and less rock, more dance. They've got a ton of synth pop tracks, they mix in some classical dance tracks that you probably know and love. They've got insane visuals that go up behind them that are bright and flashy and make you feel like there's strobe lights everywhere. And again, confetti cannons. So if you've been to shows like Dan Deacon, where Dan Deacon makes the audience participate, you're gonna get that with FM Belfast. If you've been to a Girl Talk set, if you remember Girl Talk, his sets were pretty crazy. Lots of confetti, lots of mixed in samples. So even if you don't know FM Belfast, if you go to a live show, you're gonna know songs. So they've got original, DJing, it's crazy. It's a party band. Not to mention the members in this band are so sweet. Last time I was in Iceland, I got to do a walking tour of Reykjavik with Ivar, who is one of the members of FM Belfast, and it was a basically history of the Iceland music scene walking tour. So it was different than what you normally would get when you go on walking tours in Reykjavik. We got to go to FM Belfast studio, which was right next to the Reykjavik Grapevine studio. We got to see different houses around Reykjavik where some of the more famous Icelandic musicians started their careers, the places where they all partied and hung out. So hopefully you are still doing those tours because when travel starts again, if anyone's interested in going to Iceland, I definitely recommend this tour. You get music, food, drinks, and the nicest human being that you could ever hope to meet. Now, FM Belfast has so many albums. Honestly, I just recommend picking your favorite album cover. I particularly like this one. So seriously, get on your dance pants and listen to FM Belfast and it's gonna turn your life up hard. All right, number four on today's list. If you're gonna learn about Icelandic music, you have to know this person, Bernson. So where do I even start with Bernson? I guess we'll start with the actual music that he makes. So this is another electro heavy artist, but for this one, it's gonna kind of be more of new wave type synth with vocals that make you feel like you're just in a Blade Runner loop. You know what I mean? So this is gonna be for people who like artists like New Order, Duran Duran, kind of the older 80s synth type music. Some of his songs get super, super synthy, and then he also has some super mellow ones with piano which is beautiful and they're catchy and they're dancey and they make you want to bounce around but let's talk about his live shows so Bernson is like 8.9 feet tall he's got a big ginger head of hair and a ginger beard you can't miss him he's like your quintessential cool Icelandic dude and what Bernson really likes to do in his live performances is one go out and dance with the crowd and two take off his clothes and I'm pretty sure that he removes articles of clothing based on how crazy the crowd is and it's really hard not to be crazy at a Bernson show so pretty much he's always gonna strip down to his underwear and he does it the whole time with a straight face and it's the most entertaining and fun Thing to experience. And again, because I've learned that all Icelanders are the nicest, most humble people. He's one of the friendliest dudes. I also got to see him last year in Portland, Oregon, when he came to Portland's Kex Hostel for their opening weekend big party. So Kex Hostel in Portland is a sister hotel to Kex Iceland. So it's super cool, and I'm super lucky that that's here. Because before that was even announced that that place was gonna be open in Portland, I was already obsessed with the one in Iceland, and I had stayed there and gone to shows there. So again, if you're ever in Iceland, check out Kex Hostel. If you're ever in Portland, check out Kex Hotel. So to start with Bernson, I recommend the album Lover in the Dark. Oh wait, we have it right here. Thanks Bernson for coming to Portland. All right, next up I want to share one of my favorite Icelandic gals. It's going to be Brit. So her music is kind of all over the place, which is awesome. She's got tracks that are just mostly like acoustic guitar, a little tiny bit folky, really calm and pleasant. And then she's also got explosive dance pop tracks. So you really can't go wrong with Brit and you have plenty to choose from. And she just put out a brand new full length album this month, October, if you're watching this in October. And I'm gonna try to pronounce this Icelandic word. The album is called Kvetja. Kvetja. The album is called Kvetja. So that's my Icelandic for the day. But I am so in love with this album. Since it came out, I've probably looped it like 10 times. Briette's voice is so effortlessly beautiful. I mean, seriously, it just flows like you're floating through clouds. 
I want to float on a cloud to bring out this new album. And you should too. And this new album is in Icelandic. So if you like really want to get into the Icelandic music scene and actually listen to their beautiful language put to song, this is a great place to start. A lot of Icelandic artists do sing in English, but I find it to be really, really fun when I actually get to listen to their Icelandic vocals. Like if you've listened to Sigaros, you probably have dipped your toe in the Icelandic vocals, except for the album where they made up their language. But anyway, it's a beautiful language. I love listening to it. So thanks Briette for putting something out in Icelandic for us non-worthy English speakers. <laughs> Okay, before we get into the next artist, I just want to discuss how another thing I love about the Icelandic music scene is that the artists put so much effort into their performance as well as their music in general. So when you go see an Icelandic artist, you're pretty much guaranteed that you're also going to be getting a artistic performance. And this band definitely qualifies as one of those acts that not only are you hearing great music, but you're actually getting to watch something super weird and funky. And that band is going to be Aia. So Aia is a three-piece, again, an electro synthy pop kind of group. This one's definitely heavy on the dark synths. They've definitely got a couple slower tracks that are kind of more dark ambient type haunting sound. So it's gonna be more like your Grimes, your Billie Eilish, a little bit Florence and the Machine in there. Got female vocals leading it. Gorgeous vocals, by the way. Anyway, so they have a 2018 self-titled full-length album, which is just bonkers. It's just an absolute powerhouse of all those different things that I just mentioned. I've taken this album and just put my headphones in and listened to it in the dark, like pitch black in the middle of the night and just gone to outer space. Listening to them is honestly like being inside of a haunted house in outer space but in a good way. And when they perform live, they've got all those strobe lights, colors, and the two instrumentalists wear like plastic masks over their face. So it just looks creepy and weird and the lights kind of like bounce off it and you don't really know what you're looking at because there's just lights everywhere. The song that I put on the playlist called New Moon is hands down one of my favorite songs from any Icelandic musician. I mean, I'm talking looping this song for hours. It's one of those songs where when you have it in your ears, you just like start punching the air. Like this. It's really good. Please check it out. Okay, this is gonna be the second to last artist that I'm gonna recommend today, and this one is super special. And that is Ausir. I actually learned how to pronounce that at a car rental place in Iceland where the person giving me my car was named Ausir, and I asked, how do you pronounce your name? So props to that guy for being named Ausir and introducing me to the beautiful pronunciation of this musical artist, because I was calling him Askir. So Ausir is gonna be kind of your indie rock band. They've got some electronic in there, so it's really more of like a flowy indie rock more than like heavy guitars and drums. And they've got all sorts of stuff dabbled throughout all of their songs. Strings, horns, piano, you name it. And again, his voice is so soothing and calming. I mean, that's the thing about Icelandic artists. There's definitely so much variety across all the genres, but the one thing that really brings it all together is you can actually just feel the peacefulness of that country and that environment in their music in some way. And I find it's often in the vocals. So one really fun thing about Ausir is that his father is actually a really well-known poet in Iceland, and his father writes most of his lyrics. Additionally, they often perform together. So the way they do it is that his father recites poetry and then Ausir next to him will play music along with it or they'll do a poem song, poem song. It's really awesome. The first time I ever saw this was at Iceland Airwaves in essentially a nursing home. Another great thing about this festival, so they actually have performances in a nursing home in downtown Reykjavik where the artists come and specially perform for the residents of this home. And it's amazing because the house gets packed. And if you have a ticket to the festival, you can come. There's, there's some limited space for people to join, standing room only, because it is predominantly meant for the residents. So honestly, this festival is so cool because the audience that participates and the demographic, it's just like every demographic deeply cares about music in Iceland. And Ausir did go on tour last year, so I also got to see him in Portland and it was amazing. It was the first time I'd seen him with the full band. And it was just what I expected. Beautiful. Anyway, so he also put out a brand new record this year. It's called Bury the Moon. It is available in both English and Icelandic. So again, like with Briette's new record, if you want to really experience Icelandic music, definitely check out the Icelandic version of this album. And you probably guessed it, I've got it right here. Obviously we bought the Icelandic version.
I'm not actually positive if this record in Icelandic is for sale online. I'm guessing it probably is, but I just feel like this is a super cool vinyl that we're lucky enough to have here. All right, and finally, this is the only artist that I'm going to say is my number one. I really didn't want to put the rest of the artists in order or try to pick like a top 10 or anything, but if I was doing a top 10, this is and would be my number one. If you know me, you probably know what I'm about to say. Axel Floven. I mean, really, I cannot get enough. I've probably shared every song he's ever written on all of my social medias at least five times each. Anyway, let's talk about the music. Axel Flovin is another really good example of just being able to feel the calmness and the peacefulness and the beauty of Iceland as a country, like really embedded throughout compositions. So he's mostly a solo artist, though he does tour with a full band made up of three other super talented Icelandic musicians who each have their own projects. Sometimes he brings other people around, I think, but there's so much talent in Axel Flovin, whether he is performing solo or with his band. And his songs are just so emotional they're cathartic, they're calming, they're reassuring. Honestly, they kind of make me feel like being a kid. You know, some weird amalgamation of like naivety, curiousness, but also safety. It's really hard to articulate how Axel Flovin's music makes me feel. But he's got a lot of just really earthy and peaceful tracks and then every now and then mixes in like a great pop ballad. I really love those pop ballads. <laughs> So think of Axel as kind of like a mixture of Bon Iver and the 1975 meeting like this. It's truly like the kind of music you'd probably want to be listening to when you're exploring nature peacefully alone or with like one really special person. And again, like all of the other Icelanders I've ever met or talked to. He's super kind and humble, which just makes you love his music even more. He also did a North American tour last year, so I got to see him in Portland, even though I've seen him like 20 times at Iceland Airwaves because he plays every single year and he plays like five to seven shows every single year. So he's been pretty accessible in terms of being able to see perform live, which so happy. Anyway, and big, big, big news. So Axel has, since I've been listening to his music, had just series of singles and EPs, but this January he's putting out his first full length record. Honestly, I think I might be the most excited person on the planet for this record to come out. So seriously, you know I've got that album pre-ordered. So that new album is called You Stay by the Sea and it comes out on January 15th, 2021. So hopefully you all will love his music as much as I do and definitely check out that record because I know just from following him for a while that he is so excited about it and has worked really, really hard on it. Support your favorite musicians, people. It's a rough world out there. Okay, so that is gonna do it for this week's super special episode of Music Chats here at Pokey Megan. And if you've made it this far, thank you. I hope you enjoyed it. If you really liked it and you wanna see more content like this, let me know in the comments. Definitely let me know if you check out any of these artists. And if there was one thing in the world that I encourage people to spend their money on, it's this festival. Not only do you get to go to beautiful Iceland and experience the city of Reykjavik, you get five days of amazing music that will change your life. It changed mine. And again, I do encourage you to check out the playlist that I made. You can find that link down in the description, along with links to all of the artists' YouTube pages so you can go watch some of their music videos and really get a feel for what they're like, and a link to their websites. Also links to Iceland Airwaves and links to buy tickets to the upcoming virtual festival live from Reykjavik, which will be happening November 13th and 14th. Either way, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video or at Iceland Airwaves 2021.